Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory doubled in radio in this 2009 Toyota Sienna. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove this factory radio. We'll head over to the bench, show you the parts that we're going to need for our install, including the new radio, wiring harness, and dash kit, and we'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Now as we jump into things, we need to get this guy on out. First things first, always double check to ensure that the CDs are out of the CD drive because once the radio is removed, it's really hard to remove them later. Additionally here, our Sienna does not have JBL. It doesn't have the upgraded audio sound system, but if you did, we'll link those specific parts and make those notes once we're at the bench here in a moment. Lastly, we do have the factory aux. And we have steering wheel volume controls, and if you wish to retain those, we'll show you the kits needed to do so. It makes it nice and easy, straightforward with the new radio. So let's go ahead and get this radio on out. Now we do need to pop these side pieces off as well as the top um, trim here. Generally, this is a speaker grill. If you had the JBL system, it'd be a center channel. Being the base audio system here, there's nothing there except for a little hole. I start from the bottom here, work these loose, pretty easy. Same thing with the other side, just with our panel tool, we're gonna pop these loose from the bottom, work our way up. There's plenty of length on the harnesses that you don't have to disconnect them, you can just pull them out of the way. Next thing here is we're gonna get up underneath and start working on popping out our little cover here, just like so. You start from the back, you work it forward. Now both on the right and the left side of the radio, there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts. And we have a socket here with an extension, so let's go ahead and remove those. Once those four bolts have been removed, go ahead and give the radio a little tug. It should come right on out. Now you're gonna have some various harnesses on the back of the radio. Go ahead and disconnect those harnesses. Most harnesses will have a little tab you push in, and then the harness itself should slide on out. So there's our factory radio. We're actually totally done with it. At this point of time with the radio out, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here at the bench, now the parts that we're gonna use for our install today, first and foremost is the radio that the customer has chosen to go with. It's this Alpine ILX W650. It's a short chassis radio that features both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. To integrate this radio to the factory location, we do need a few harnesses and adapters. The dash kit that we're installing this radio with is the Metra 95-8208. It's for this specific generation Toyota Sienna. And a wiring harness wise, we need this Crux SWRTY61S. Since our Sienna does not have factory JBL, we need this version. If you do have JBL, it's the SWRTY-61J for JBL. Um, and this adapter kit retains both your factory aux and steering wheel volume controls. And over here are the harnesses that are included with our Alpine. Now, this is an optional piece. We have a dual USB flush mount adapter. The USB port is on the back of the radio, which is primarily used for CarPlay and Android Auto to make it a little bit easier to access. And rather than throwing the USB in the glove box, we're gonna flush mount a USB in one of the factory power socket cigarette lighter ports there just for a nice clean finish. So what further ado, what we're gonna do at this point of time is grab our harness that came with our radio. We're gonna have the harnesses out of our Crux box. Today we're gonna be soldering up those connections and let's go ahead and prepare this harness. Okay, so now we've grabbed our wiring harness that came with our radio and we grab the Crux harness that came in the Crux box. We've stripped both ends here and now it's tempting to actually match all color for color. Every once in a while, a color may not match exactly. So what you want to do is always verify the function of the wire versus just assume that the color matches. What we're going to be doing today is soldering our connections, but if you don't know how to solder, we suggest using some butt connectors or crimp caps. Make those connections. Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as they're just not designed for an automotive application.
All right, so we went ahead and soldered up all our connections. Now, actually, for the most part, it is color for color, but I do want to warn you, it is tempting to match all colors, like this orange with a white stripe, with the orange or orange with a white stripe on your crux harness. But this orange with a white stripe, Alpine's changed that color. Instead of being an illumination, that's actually your verse gear trigger wire. So you don't want to hook that up over here or else as soon as you put the vehicle headlights on, it would actually trigger the radio to go in reverse and then you would get no image. We are doing a backup camera on this van, so we'll show you exactly where to connect your reverse trigger and the parking brake. You can use an Alpine bypass, which we can link that video and part in the description as well. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move our heat shrink up and over those connections and we're gonna shrink them down with a heat gun. Now before we uh, uh, button up this harness with a little bit of high temperature tested tape, we actually also teed in to the red and the black wire. Uh, these are actually gonna power a front camera and a rear camera that we're doing on this fan. And also we added an extra remote turn on wire off our blue white in case we add an amplifier down there. All right, so we finished propping our harness here. This end goes to our radio. This end plugs into the vehicle connectors. This end is our steering wheel volume control module, and we went ahead and already preset our dip switches based on the instructions provided by Crux. Uh, for Toyota, if you look at your specific dip switches here, dip switch five through eight are vehicle specific. So for Toyota, it's going to be off, on, off, on, or down, up, down, up. And then one through four is specific to your radio. Again, you're gonna to have to use the instructions provided by Crux to know exactly which dip switch configuration with one through four is gonna to pertain to your specific radio. Alpine in our instructions happens to be off, 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 off. So we didn't even have to touch them, which was super nice. With Alpine, this pl M plugs into the WR or the steering wheel remote input on the back of the radio. And that's all done. That'll retain the steering wheel volume buttons. This long harness off of here, um, this is going to be for our parking brake because we're going to hook that up correctly. Uh, we have a little T-tap that we're going to tap into the parking brake. There's a single wire off the parking brake mechanism that we'll uh, actually just tap into here with our yellow with a blue-black-ish stripe. And then our reverse gear trigger, since our harness doesn't provide it, you can simply run a wire all the way back and tap into the hatch reverse light positive, which is a red with a kind of a black stripe um, in the hatch, or you can find it in the kick. We're gonna run their reverse gear trigger, which on an Alpine is this orange with a white strip. This is not illumination, this is reverse trigger. We're gonna run this down to the kick panel because that's it's there and available, and we'll show you where we're gonna tap that into in the backup camera video if you wanna see that in action. So with the harness done and out of the way, what we can do is sit this off to the side and start working on our dash kit. Now with the dash kit that comes in that package, um, and uh, essentially here it comes with this faceplate, these little side brackets that simply just snap on the sides. Um, there's a right and there's a left side, and it'll have a nice little trim piece that you can basically just slide right on in, just like so. And what we need to do now is seat the radio up into the kit, kind of get it seated just where we want it, and then we're gonna put the screws supplied by the Alpine radio in the side brackets to hold it in place. All right, so we got our radio all mounted in. We need, still need to pull off the screen protector, but uh, basically it's pretty straightforward for it to mount in the kit using the screws provided by the radio manufacturer. We got our harness adapter ready to go. At this point of time, this is the majority of what we need to do on the bench. Let's head back to the car to get everything installed. Now we're actually back here in the car. We're gonna do a slight modification to this lower trim panel. And the reasoning behind it is there's two power sockets here at the very bottom, and we're gonna replace one of those with a dual USB, one of which is gonna be a dedicated flush mount USB to our radio for wired CarPlay and Android Auto, and then we'll convert the other one to a dedicated charge. So we're gonna pop this lower panel out of the way so we have access to it. We're gonna move our little side piece. Now there's two 10 millimeter bolts holding these in. Let's go ahead and grab these. Go ahead and remove our gear shifter here. Now our uh, shifter itself may be in the way. Let's go ahead and put in the key and work it kind of down here. OK, 
Okay, it just unsnaps. Put this back in park. And we'll disconnect our power harnesses here. Okay, now we're gonna take this bezel over to the bench to replace one of these power sockets for our flush. Back mount. at the bench here, so we have our bezel. What we're gonna do is pop out the center power socket. So what we can do in its place is put a flush mount USB adapter which will allow us to access CarPlay and charge and everything more conveniently um, versus just having a USB cable hanging out the dash or in the glove box. So we're gonna pop this on out. Usually we'll get a pick tool and start by un uh, relieving the clips to pop out the center piece and then we'll pop out the outer plastic. Now it appears that it doesn't quite fit, so we'll just make the hole slightly bigger with the file. All right, so we've glued in our piece there, so it's ready to go. We actually use hot glue instead of super glue or CA glue, just because in the event we wanna go back to the power socket, we can. Um, we'll just chip away at the glue, um, so it's not 100% permanent. Flipping that on over, looks super good on this side here. Last quick note, how we're gonna dedicate one of these two to charge. So we're gonna actually reuse our power socket. We'll tape this up, plug in the one that we're not using right into the open part we'll go plug this back in and one of these will become dedicated charge while the other will run up to the radio and plug to the back usb input on our alpine unit all right so let's go ahead and reassemble our pocket here All right, so we're back here in the car, ready to start getting our radio installed. We have our harness adapter, and the nice thing is, it will plug all in just like so. They're all keyed differently, and they're all different sizes, so they'll plug in just like that. Now, we weren't using our aux adapter, just because our Alpine radio doesn't have an aux. We're kind of past that stage in life, so we cap those off. And we can tuck everything back in here. Now for our parking brake and our backup camera trigger wire. We're going to run those down into the dash here. And it will come out kind of by the, the feet area. And that's where we're going to make those connections. Okay, so we're finally ready with now these connectors all done. To get the radio finally all reinstalled. Grab our WR output to go to the remote input for steering wheel volume controls, Bluetooth mic. We installed a front and a rear camera, so let's connect those. Connect our USB adapter here. Last connection is we gotta plug in our AM FM antenna. Okay, now we have a few adapters. Let's go ahead and tuck everything back into the dash here. Okay, let's do a test. Okay, so that seems to be working great. So if we hit camera, we have our backup camera. We also did a front camera. So at this point of time, let's go ahead and finish reassembling the radio. All right, so everything seems to be working great. We got everything all back together, and at this point of time, we are good to go with this install. Now, like mentioned before, we did do a backup camera, 
So if you want to see how we did the backup camera, we'll link that video down in the description for you, which walks you through step by step on how to integrate one to your new aftermarket radio. If you like any of the parts that we use, we'll link those down in the description here for you. And as mentioned before, be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.